What is up guys, my name is Ignis, welcome back to the channel. May passed and we are up for another dividend portfolio on Revolut update. It seems that Revolut has updated their security policy, so it's not anymore possible to record or take screenshots over the app. This is a huge issue for the way we do things here and the transparency I want to keep, so later on we'll talk about the steps I'm taking going further. So far we'll have to do with what we have in the tracker on Google Sheets. But first, as usual, I want to make a quick giveaway. So every month I randomly pick a commenter under any of my videos, who gets invited to Discord, where I share all the extra materials I'm using to pick stocks. So for this month Farron Barry got picked, where he shared his negative opinion on PNC. Thank you Aaron, contact me directly on any platform, and I'll sort you out for those extra materials. Now if you would like to get into these benefits too, all you need to do is leave a comment under any of my recent videos, I'm randomly picking one every month, and then you'll get the Discord invitation free of charge. Otherwise you can of course go the standard route, and support the channel by becoming a member for a monthly fee. So that's done and let's go back to the portfolio update. So the first part we are taking a look into our dividends, I've already summed them up in this table. So the first dividend in May was from Communication Services Verizon, ticker symbol VZE. The dividend was at $1.33. Then again Communication Services AT&T, ticker symbol T, with another $1.04. On May 10th MasterCard paid, ticker symbol MA, with an addition of $0.61. Cent. Then Consumer Discretionary Lows, ticker symbol LOW, $1.38. May 12th it was ASML, addition of 83 cents, then Industrials Caterpillar, ticker symbol CT, another $1.42. May 3rd it was a big day, with consumer discretionary Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX, $2.42. Then Financials Charles Schwab, ticker symbol SCHW, $1.28. And the Bank Citigroup, ticker symbol C, with $3.22. And then lastly, on the last day of May, we got Consumer Staples Walmart, ticker symbol WMT, with another dividend of $0.72. Cents. So summing up the dividends, they came in at $14.15, which is more than 3x increase from last year's May of $4.46, plus 224.5% year over year. Also another $4 addition from the same month in the previous quarter. So with 5 months into the year, we now have the dividend summed at $70.59. Now to reach last year's dividend, we are just missing another $13, but looking back that we got over $23 in March, that should be a similar case for June 2, and we'll get more dividends in the first 6 months of this year compared to 12 months of 2022. 2 more weeks left to see if we can reach this result. So we are close to that goal of beating last year's dividend, but there is one more that it seems we have already covered. So for the current portfolio, the annual dividend income should be coming at $243.95, and dividing it by 12, that is $20.33 every month. So we went over this goal of on average getting $20 in dividends every month. Now with this dividend income, we can cover our monthly phone bill 4 times, we can easily cover internet expenses at $15 per month, and we are now halfway there of covering monthly entertainment expenses at $40. Still a long way to go where we can cover all monthly expenses, but 2.1% of it is a start. So in May, as usual, I've added 500 new dollars into the account, and together with the available cash from last time, bought into free names. So one of those is from financial sector, Charles Schwab, ticker symbol SHW. I've added $300 in and got 6.038 of a share at an average buying price of $49.69 per share. Now in a month's time the position went up a bit, I'm up for $30.98 plus 10.33%. Charles Schwab now takes 2.99% of my portfolio and that is 18.04% of exposure in financial sector. Since the stock went up a bit from where I initially bought, currently it is yielding 1.82% in dividends, 
and my yield on cost is at 2.01%. So this position is now bringing $6.04 in dividends on an annual basis. Now the next name I increased my position in this month was from healthcare Thermo Fisher Scientific ticker symbol TMO. I've added $200 into this position and I'm now holding 0.946 of a share at an average price per share of $520.42. The stock currently is a bit down, I'm losing $3.02 on the position and that is minus 0.6%. Thermo Fisher now takes 4.49% of the portfolio and that is 26.58% of my exposure in the healthcare sector. The stock is now trading at a dividend yield of 0.27% and I got it very close at 0.26% and this position is now bringing $1.32 on an annual basis. So lastly there was another stock that I have increased my exposure in, that is from materials sector Sherwin Williams ticker symbol SHW. I've added $200 in and now holding 1.698 of a share at an average price of $235.51 per share. I'm up a bit on this position plus $17.82, an increase of 4.46%. So Sherwin Williams takes up 3.78% of the portfolio and this is the only one name in materials with 100% exposure. Currently the stock is trading at a dividend yield of 0.89%, but I got it a bit lower so the yield on cost is now at 1.03%. And the position is bringing $4.11 in dividends on an annual basis. Overall surprisingly we are now in the green with this portfolio. It is valued at $11,065.12 and I have myself deposited $10,680. So we are now up for $385.12, higher for 3.61%. So as already discussed, we have reached that $20 per month goal, which is $204 annually, and it is about time we bump it up a bit. So the next one will be $360 per year, which is then $40 every month. We already have covered two thirds of the way, so it should be an easy walk towards this one. Now for the last part I would like to also share my portfolio allocation by sector, where we'll check if we're overweight or underweight any, and we'll have an idea of which ones should be the focus going further. So by adding money into Charles Schwab, we increased exposure in financials, where we now have $1834.81 in it, and that takes 16.58% of the portfolio, with a target of 14%. Now adding into Thermo Fisher also added into healthcare, we now have $871.84 there, it takes 16.92% of the portfolio, where the target is at 16%. And then we also added into materials with Sherwin Williams, so we now have $417.82 for this sector, it takes 3.78% of the portfolio, where we have set a target at 3%. So it seems that at least these three sectors aren't the focus going further. We are over the target percentages on all three. Though I do think consumer stables could be an interesting add. It is currently 7.28% of the portfolio with $805 in. So almost 1% under the target where it is at 8%. And then maybe also consumer discretionary with 11.58% of the portfolio though the target here is 12%. I'll be checking which names from these sectors could we add money into going further. So Revolut is not anymore allowing to make recordings on the app, and that is a huge issue doing portfolio updates, meaning that we'll likely need to switch for another broker. And turns out that I do have one available. So I'll check into it further, but I'll probably be switching my investing to Itora. There previously was one issue with tax withholding, but I think they solved that, so it should be a decent solution for my needs going further. At least no issues with screen recordings on it. So we have finished with the Revolut's dividend portfolio update. Now if you would like to get into details, or you would like to use this document for yourself, you can access it free of charge by following the first link at the top of the description. Now which consumer discretionary and stable names should I be adding into the portfolio? 
share your best dividend stock picks from these sectors in a comment below. You can also help me out further and leave a thumbs up under the video. Previously I've made comparisons on various dividend paying stocks, so if you are interested in any of these then click on a video that is currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing y'all in the next one.